Welcome. Today, we're going to be discussing deaf education, specifically the Milan Conference. It happened in 1880. That had a huge impact on deaf education even until today. Even though it was a long time ago, it still has an effect. And so our friend, Elaine, is a teacher of the deaf, and she's going to go ahead and give the history and how much of an impact it's had on today's deaf education. Let's go. The Milan Congress happened in 1878 until 1880. The first meeting they had was in Paris. That meeting was to discuss oralism or lip reading. They didn't want to use sign language or finger spelling. And this is for the education of deaf children. So they had an argument. There was about 27 different people. And a lot of people actually saw the first Paris conference, and then they decided to set up another conference, which was in Milan, in Italy. That was in 1880, and a lot more people attended. About 164 delegates were there. There was only one deaf delegate, and his name was James Dennison. He was the principal of the Kendall School for the Deaf in Washington, D.C., and he supported sign language. There were four other Americans who supported sign language, which were Edward Gallaudet, Thomas Gallaudet, Louis Pete, and Charles Stoddard. And they supported sign language, and they were all hearing. Now, the other delegates did not support sign language. They preferred oralism. They wanted to ban sign language. The oralist delegates decided that sign language doesn't have any grammar to it. They felt that if you supported spoken language, you couldn't have sign language. So that's why they wanted to have oralism. So what they did at the conference is they had some oral students come up as a panel. And then they had a person come and ask them questions and the student had to answer them in spoken English or in their spoken language. And interestingly enough, at the Congress, they noticed that the students would answer the questions really fast, even before the person had um, finished their question. So it raised some suspicions that they had practiced before the conference had even started, you know, just to make oralism seem better. Now, in the past, a lot of people didn't understand the uniqueness of sign language. They didn't understand it as a language. They just thought it was strange. It didn't match what their world was. And so most of the hearing people felt that deaf children needed to be oral. They needed to match what the majority of hearing people were. So the teachers, the politicians, parents, they all decided to get together and they wanted to pass a law that required oralism to be education and drop sign language. By the year 1919, around 80% of the schools were oral-based. And research does not prove that accurately, but it's impossible that they've totally dropped sign language. There's no way. There's suspicion that, you know, in hidden places, you know, in secret at home or with friends, students would use sign language. Now, later on, Sign language, ASL, was recognized as a language. And I, as a teacher, I know that the students need to be able to pick up a language, which is their sign language. They need it. That gives them the ability to have a better self-esteem and not have so many issues internally. The reason I know this is because I see it every day in my classroom. If I see it, that's my proof. And so now you see it more and more. People like Marley Matlin. She's involved in the movie industry and she actually won an Academy Award. She was on Dancing with the Stars. And then there's Niall DeMarco. He was America's Next Top Model winner. Sean Forbes. He's a musician. And all of them are deaf. If you look at the technology people are using now, they're able to really appreciate and spread sign language. And all of these people, all of this is using sign language, ASL. 
You know, you, students need to be able to talk with their family, their friends, everybody. And also, ASL does not mean that English is a bad thing. That's not true. ASL is a bridge to writing and to reading spoken language. It works. Having access to a language is your right. Thanks. Wow, that was a lot of information. That was great. Definitely. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something new. Of course, if you want to learn more, go ahead and research yourself. There's so many resources out there, and we can add some of those below in the description. Yeah, I'll have a blog post talking more about deaf education, the Milan conference, and all of that. So remember, deaf education has so much information to look at, not only the Milan conference. So if you're interested, like you said, research it. Okay, if you guys have enjoyed the video, please click the like. And remember to subscribe. We still have a few more left for our Deaf History Month series. Hopefully you enjoy the series. And remember, we have a Patreon page, so if you want to take a look and give us some support, we'd really appreciate it. Yes, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for your support. Of course. And if you don't want to or you can't, that's fine. Just leave a comment down below. We appreciate it as well. All right, see you in the next video. Bye! Things kind of slowed down a bit, and I would say from about the year 2000 until the present time, then production really started to skyrocket.